Welcome to our third um, artist conversation video with the Melton Gallery. My name is Veronica Cianfrano. I am the curator for Melton Gallery. Um, and just as a quick reminder, through this series, we talk to two artists at a time where we are able to take a look at their studio space and talk to them a little bit about their artistic process, what it's like to remain productive or to make work during isolation and how that has changed their work, if at all, and how, how they define success. So I'm joined today by Grace Isabel and Rose Jaffe. Rose Jaffe is a visual artist with medium spanning, mural painting, ceramics, printmaking, and digital illustration. Born and raised in the nation's capital, Rose loves calling Washington, D.C. home. She earned her BFA at the School of Art and Design at the University of Michigan and has pursued an art career full-time after teaching middle and high school art in the city. She has painted over 30 murals nationally and internationally, including over 20 in D.C. Her art has been featured in over 12 publications, including the Washington Post and City Paper, as well as NBC, CNN, and Channel 9, among others. The themes of her work include political activism, social justice, natural healing, and spiritual grounding. Her work is vibrant, colorful, and often playful. She is dedicated to the work of harnessing the power of art to find connections, build community, spark conversations, and create social change. Grace Isabel is a Pennsylvania native and graduate of Pennsylvania Academy of Fine Arts. She currently splits her time between the East Coast and Whitefish, Montana. Often utilizing non-traditional materials, her work draws upon the landscape as a catalyst to discuss memory and our sense of place. She combines the ephemeral patterns found in the woods of her East Coast home with the rugged surfaces inspired by living and adventuring in the Western wilderness. Her paintings address the dichotomies found in nature that echo those we find in ourselves. So welcome. Thank you so much for joining me and having this discussion with me. Um, I'm really grateful that you're able to take the time out to, to talk to me about your work and your working lives as artists. Thanks for having us. Yeah, thank you. I would like to start with you, Rose, if you don't mind um, showing us a little bit around your space and showing us your process a little bit? Sure. So I'm here, um, I'm here in Washington, D.C., and I'm in my studio in Petworth, which is sort of pretty much the middle of the city. Um, it's a really nice space. It used to be an auto body shop, and it's transitioned to a few things, and now it's my studio. I rent the space to a few other artists, but I've been pretty lucky in quarantine that one of them is um, in a different country, and the other one is sort of quarantining, quarantining at home. So I've kind of had this space to myself, which nice. is pretty nice. Awesome. Um, it also has heat, which is kind of a new thing for, for my studio. So that's also pretty exciting. Um, okay, so I'm going to flip my camera around. Okay, so this is sort of my space. It's kind of insane right now. But um, I have some plant friends. And I have this big middle table, which I am sort of staging a lot of prints at the moment. So I've been doing a lot of printmaking, which is like my new love. So I have like bins and bins of my lino blocks. Um, and I've been playing with oil-based inks. So that's kind of my new thing. I was just starting to do kind of a fellowship at a printmaking studio right when all this started. So I had to transition everything back to here and I was learning etching from an artist, but I'm going back to carving. So these are all carving blocks. Um, so this is kind of that set up. Um, I've been carving a lot of like fungi lately and different mushrooms, which has been pretty fun. I have an online shop, so I'm sort of staging a lot of these are all prints from my online shop. So just kind of getting that all together. Um, I've been doing that the past few days. So my online shop has been really great for me to sustain myself. Honestly, it's been pretty moot for the past few years, but now I'm actually doing something with it. Um, these are just other, I have like literally stacks of art. I've been here every day pretty much. So this is other printmaking experiments. Um, these are just like funny people. I'm not really sure. This is like a stencil that I used to create the body. Um, I have a lot of these. 
It looks um, like I, using lino cuts, almost like stamps. Yep, exactly. So these are all individual stamps. Mm -hmm. um, and so I'm playing with like a lot of opacity and transparent base and seeing what it looks like when they're overlapping with each other. And I've been really enjoying that process. And sometimes I'll like kind of come in and draw with, um, with it as well and kind of playing around. So it's really just experimenting. This is all just studies, really. Um, these are other like just sort of stencils I made and then I'm stamping within a stencil and kind of seeing what that looks like. So that's pretty fun. These are other um, just stamps. These are all overlapping stamps and playing and practicing with that. Um, most of my work is all figurative and kind of people based um, but I also kind of randomly started making some abstract paintings which I feel very out of my element but sort of playing with like form and color and I think they're pretty pretty god awful but sort of playing with um, texture and those types of things so that's been pretty interesting and um, let's see this is also just more lino block studies of faces. These are some other kind of two color studies. I'm, I'm self-taught with um, lino block stuff. I didn't really learn that in school. I studied painting really. Um, these are more blocks, endless amounts of things like that. Um, this is like kind of a Bauhaus inspired piece that I made for a gallery in DC. They had a big fundraiser. So this is like a two color Bauhaus piece. Um, these are other, you know, who knows, random studies. Um, I was doing some filming yesterday for a line block class that I'm going to publish on my website. That's what that's for. This is kind of like a larger uh, piece that I made with all of my line blocks of the fun guy and these are all, again, these are all individual stamps that I put together. This is a piece that I made. It's, um, it's basically, I discovered the art of laser cut. So I basically laser cut all these pieces individually and then glue them all together. So it kind of has some dimension. Basically, I'm tired of painting on flat surfaces. So I've been playing with a lot of sculpture and like, you know, a little bit more of 3D elements. So this is just a study of like some potential larger scale cutouts. This is a, the first um, laser cut piece that I made out of a line drawing. So that was very cool. Um, I'm curious, what brought you into doing the lino, the lino cuts, um, or I'm sorry, the laser cuts? Is it, was it something that were you feeling dissatisfied with the 2D element or were you just feeling like you wanted to push the imagery into something um, three dimensional and like, how did making murals play into that? I'm curious. Yes. Great question. So I, yeah, I think that I've just been painting flat for a long time and I actually got into doing the 3d stuff from murals. I basically had a huge commission from the city to do these portraits. This is another sort of, um, like 3d situation. Yeah. Um, and the wall was really challenging to it. Like the mortar was really receded from the brick. So I couldn't right. really paint directly on it. So I ended up doing it on 3d on panels, basically on wood right. panels. Okay. Um, and I started just doing cutouts. This is like another one. Um, so I started doing these cutouts and I, I, I cut everything out myself basically. Yeah. And so from that, I was like, wow, I can do big faces that are cut out. And I had all this extra wood. So I basically started making like, this is an example of one of these wood cutouts. This is just on wood. I, my goal is to create like freestanding sculptures, but I just am not quite there. So this is like my way of a stepping into that direction. But it really started with doing more mural, um, kind of trying to approach this wall. And that's how I really got into the cutouts. This is a huge pile of like trying to figure out how to make um, more like 3D, like 
<laughs> yeah, because then that comes into how do I ship this? How does, you know, how do I get other people to help me assemble this in a systematic and time efficient manner? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's a lot. It's like a whole new world that I'm sort of getting excited about. This is like hands or something. Um, so yeah, basically it's just an exciting new space to foray into um, post painting. I think this time in quarantine, for me, a lot of what I play with and, and struggle with is just time is like having time to make art. And I think a lot of artists feel that way, especially, you know, in the capital system where everything you have to make is needs to be bought or sold. Um, so I've had a lot of extra time in this quarantine. I've been really lucky that I had huge contracts last fall that have allowed me to kind of skate a little bit through this time. And I've made some just awful paintings, just awful. I hate them. But I think that it's like I kind of needed to just make a bunch of bad art and um, paint over them. And I never really had the time to just get into kind of more studies and playing. And I think it's such an important part of the artistic process. I think it's essential, actually. Oh. All right. So, Grace, do you want to show us a little bit about what your studio is about? Sure. So I am currently um, in a basement studio. It's been a temporary situation while in quarantine. Um, but I'll try to give you a little bit of a, a tour around here. Let's see if it's... So, um, so right now, if you can see okay, I'm working in this basement space, um, but I'm making relatively large paintings. Um, these are all squares. Um, I'll kind of give you a bit of a tour here. Um, I'm making, they're all about four foot by four foot. And um, it's obviously, ideally, I would love to have um, some natural light, but that is not in the cards at the moment. Quarantine has given me the opportunity to completely alter the way that I'm making work. Um, so I would say for the last three years or so, I've been really discontent with my oil painting um, in the in the sense of I felt like I was making imagery, um, which is completely fine, but I was much more interested in um, making a surface and kind of building uh, this idea of a painting rather than making a, a referential picture. In my new paintings um, that I've been making since, let's see, since mid-March, uh, I haven't had access to oil paint um, because the, the art supply stores have been closed um, and I just haven't wanted to invest in the typical rather expensive oil paints that I'm used to using. And so uh, it really, honestly, it, it made me realize that I was kind of using those materials as a crutch. And so uh, the new work, A, I've been working much larger than I normally do. I'd say for the past five years, I haven't worked larger than maybe a foot by a foot, um, oftentimes because I've been traveling and on the road. Um, and so having the opportunity to be in one place, forced to sit still and um, really confront myself as a painter again has made me realize that, I mean, I, I've always been a large scale painter. I, I crave that surface expansion. Um, and so just having the time to work large again has been huge. But beyond that, um, I'm really utilizing, I'm utilizing found materials in a way that I never have before. Um, so these new paintings have been made exclusively from um, found, materials or materials purchased in the hardware store just because that was what was accessible um so i'm utilizing wax i'm using found cardboard um i'm utilizing different sheet metals that i'm just adhering and gluing so a lot of these have been really dictated by this idea of um of touch my my little nephew he was around nine at the time and i, I love the way that children see art um, and he was looking at my oil paintings and he, he made a comment um, that he understood my paintings better as if they were braille. Um, that he could read them through his fingertips more than he could read them as, as a picture. Um, and that really stuck with me. And so since, since that comment, um, I, I've really been kind of re-understanding re this idea of how to make a painting. Um, and a lot of that has been uh, understanding it through my fingertips. 
Um, and my, my background, I'm a, I was a big rock climber and I always, um, I spent a lot of time understanding place through my fingertips rather than through just my eyes. Um, so I really was understanding kind of the soul of the place through touch. Um, and so that's really been informing this latest body of work. I basically just begin with adhering um, pieces of cardboard, large chunks of material with nails, glue, etc., um, to my birch panels. And um, from there, it's been this idea of adding materials on um, and then painting them over and then kind of excavating, so digging back into the surface. Um, and I've really been inspired by this idea of, uh, I think it was Jasper Johns said this, that it's not necessarily um, stop asking yourself, what can you do, but what can you not not do? Um, and just the things that kind of come without trying. And so for me, um, one of the things that I have always done in my painting process, I don't really know why, but um, whenever I've added a lot onto a surface, I've covered the whole thing in white. So lately I've been I've been adding all these complex layers and then literally just pouring white paint, um, house paint onto the paintings. And then as they're drying, I'm sort of excavating and digging back into the surface. Um, um, I'm a very aggressive kind of fast painter. I, I work in quick outbursts of energy, um, but my aesthetic is really quiet and still and calm. Um, and so I feel like my work is kind of always playing with this tension of um, aggression and quietness and uh, really kind of ties back to that idea of, um, of winter and, um, and how snow will affect these really kind of rugged landscapes. And it's been really hard because as a, as a painter, and I'm not sure if this um, resonates with either of you, but um, as a uh, someone who's trained in painting, I'm so used to referencing images all the time. I constantly go back to referencing imagery and I have to kind of bash myself over the head with, you're not making an image right now, you're making a surface. Um, and trying to create these, these pictures that are interesting because of um, the surface design rather than just uh, kind of adhering to the crutch for me it's a crutch um of utilizing like referencing the landscape constantly and uh i've, I've traveled a lot through um through the west in particular and uh, i was struck as i was traveling by by this thought that different cultures have always had uh, mythologies that have kind of formulated the way that we think about the landscape but I was interested in this idea of creating um, almost abstract mythologies um, about the landscape. So sort of taking the landscape and making it into this um, other kind of uh, separated, almost holy mythology. Um, so I've been trying to kind of pay homage to that through, through my sense of touch while I'm making these paintings. Um, so yeah, so I've really been thinking about specific places and their history as I've been making these paintings um, and really paying attention and studying uh, the background of places that I'm thinking of as I'm creating them. That's really interesting. When you say, hearing you say that and looking at the work, I think immediately of the destruction of the landscape. Is that something that you're investigating too? Yeah, for sure. Um, uh, when I began painting, you know, early on, um, I was always really interested in like the traditional uh, German landscapes where the figure was removed from the landscape. Um, mm -hmm. It was a really uh, radical thing at the time. And I loved that idea of removing the human element and just kind of getting back to these raw elemental um, spaces that are have been so significant to us throughout time um i want to break down that boundary between the viewer and the painting um so uh these are made in in such a fashion that they are meant to be touched um and i find the gallery culture that surrounds paintings um very strange uh very 
very unsettling because I think it's such a natural human instinct to want to engage with a piece with all of your senses and not just with your eyes. Um, and so a lot of the paintings that I'm making um, at the moment are made to be engaged with all of your senses. So for instance, um, that includes smell. I'm using coffee oh. filters. I'm using tea bags. I'm using uh, scents and materials that are tied to memory through um, uh, the olfactory sensor senses. And so uh, I want you to be able to engage with a painting um, through all of those factors. I want you to be able to brush your hand down it. I want you to be able to smell it. Um, and it, not in the hopes that you're engaging with my experience, but that it, it triggers something in yourself that you experienced um, and helps you to reframe the way that you understand your sense of place. Sounds and like quarantine is like completely changing your work in some ways. Well, I think for me, it's less of a change as much as it has been a return. Um, and just it's giving me the space and opportunity to return to who I am naturally as a painter um, and return to my roots and kind of give myself permission for those to be uh, enough and OK. Um, so that idea of just kind of coming back to home has been figurative and literal. It's just such a an unheard of opportunity to be able to make work where we don't have that outside pressure of, oh, I'm showing this to someone or someone's going to see this or um, or I need to share this. It's just been really refreshing. Yeah. I cannot agree more. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, Rose, has quarantine changed the way you make work or changed your work at all? Or is it more like what Grace was just talking about, sort of an opportunity to reflect and and just kind of get down to making things. Yeah, I think um, I wouldn't say it's changed my work at all. Um, I think that if anything, yeah, it's just given me an opportunity to really dig into the work that I'm making. And I, um, and at least for me, this has been um, a way for me to cope with anxiety. It's been a, a way for me to kind of, um, it's art is always a healing place for me, even when it's challenging. Um, it's just a, it's a practice that I think is, yeah, so essential in my life in so many ways. Actually, the month before this happened, I was doing a solo self-residency um, where I basically just decided that I was going to have a residency on my own. Mm -hmm. And so I put an away message on my email and I told people that I wasn't taking new, new work. And February is pretty slow month anyways. So I was like, this is a perfect time to do this. Um, but even still, like I was still, it was still hard for me to kind of get away from everything. Yeah. And then literally the next month, you know, there's a global pandemic. So I was like, all right. And lots of people were joking with me. They're like, okay, well, is this the residency that you're looking for? <laughs> um, and I was like, you know, under these circumstances, it's pretty terrible. But this really has been a time where I can just be home. It's like I'm away almost, you know, I can be home. I can get up in the morning. Um, and we might talk a little bit more about like schedule, but I sort of can do my admin work at home and then close my laptop, drive to my studio where I can be alone and work for eight hours and then go home and, you know, go to bed. So I think that it's just really given me the time to just be. Um, and I think one other thing is that I'm the kind of artist that I really work like through challenging times. Like yeah. I, I, I really get tied up around like what my art means and, you know, is it, is it of importance? And, you know, I just, I can get really tied up with, with yeah. a concept around my art. Um, and I think that I was, there was a few days there that I was just really going through it with like, what does this all mean? My art is all trash. Should I burn it all? <laughs> the obligatory <laughs> existential crisis. Ab absolutely. A hundred percent. Yeah. It was just yeah. like, I, I hate all of this. And, and then I was like, you know what, I'm just going to, I'm just going to make work and kind of see what I like and get back to the process. And yeah. so I think that I just worked through that and came out the other side with these prints that, you know, I think are really fun and I'm just enjoying making them. And, you know, sometimes I'm like, you know what, that's just fine for now. And I'll continue to build on that. So, um, yeah, it's been great to be honest. Can I ask a question, Rose? Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm curious, so I don't know if you found this, but like mentioning the, the word fun, um, I have felt this 
pressure as I've been painting over quarantine to kind of address these like large global issues that are happening. Um, and for me, it's been kind of a study in just learning how that I don't have the capacity to do that right now. Um, and just being able to sit and enjoy my materials has been what I've been able to do. Um, and that's been very difficult for me to like detach from, okay, I don't need to make work right now about all of this that's going on. I don't need to. Um, someone else will, and I applaud that. I have not been able to. And so I really respect that idea of like just being able to have fun in your studio and have something that's kind of life giving um, while this is happening. And I think that's a hard thing to do and to um, to really enter into. So that, that that's an interesting, an interesting way of putting it. I'm glad you mentioned that. Um, yeah, I, I honestly, I struggle with that. Yeah, what you just said all the time. And I think part of it is that I used to do um, almost 100% of the work that I made was like very focused on just social justice oriented work. Yeah. And um, I feel like I rolled with a crew of artists that was really like, if you're not making art that's somehow relevant to a cause, like, right, it's fluff, and it doesn't matter. And it's just to totally self serving. Right. And I right. think that I've just completely turned the other way about about that and also just through learning and talking to lots of other artists and growing and aging and all those things sure. and now I, I really do find that um yeah that honestly like finding making these beings that I find I find so much joy from that creating is mm -hmm. um, not only makes and heals me as a person but then I can actually turn back and serve my community better yeah. and more fully yeah. You know, do, I'm doing some work right now about the about bailout programs and just releasing people from prison. And it took me a while to kind of like get get into the motion. I think a lot of people went through the phase of like, oh, my God, this is terrifying. Like, I'm going to just go into my hole. And then after a while, being like, all right, at least for me, I was like, all right, I'm ready to have my studio work and then also engage with the community and talk to other artists and think yeah. how we can kind of amplify messages. So I think it's totally different for everyone. And you have to sort of plug in what where it feels right for you all right now it's time for the hardest question are you ready ready how do you define success how do i define success i define success um i think you know when i define success i i think i attribute it a lot to um kind of happiness and joy and peace and freedom those those words sort of come to mind and for me personally, that is making art that I, um, that I like love to make that no, somebody's not telling me to make it. Um, but I'm just coming to my studio and making art. So I, I feel like sometimes I make the analogy of like, I'm sort of a plant and like when I'm fully watered, like, what does that look like? What am I doing in my life when I'm feeling like that? And it really is when I can be in my studio as much as possible. So I feel lots of gratitude for the fact that I'm just a full-time working artist and I found a lot of success in my career. Um, I feel like I'm finally at a space where financially I can not have to get up and think about making money on a particular day every single day. I don't have a job. I don't have a boss. I don't have a job that I have to show up to. Um, I'm, I'm grateful literally every day about that. And the, the term success, like I feel successful now. I think that I I, I have lots of goals. I would love to be in a museum. I would love to kind of um, continue to be inspiring um, to younger artists. You know, being an artist that inspires other people um, to make art and use, use their art to kind of, whether it's heal themselves or heal the community around them, um, to me, that's like successful. And I would say that people buy my art. <laughs> I, I feel like that's um, a sign of, you know, I, I hate to say that that's a sign of success, but I think that, um, you know, it's important that people resonate with the work that I love to make and that they buy it. And so I really love that too. For most people, that's the only way to not have a boss is to get people to buy your work. So Yeah, <laughs> that's very true. <laughs> yeah. Good answer. Yeah. All right. What do you think? How do you define success and how has that changed or it has it changed over time? Yeah. So, um, 
you know, for me, I, I, I want to, the word endurance keeps popping into mind um, and just continuously making work and kind of digging and digging and digging repeatedly. Um, and so for me, I mean, I've been painting consistently for the last decade and I, I feel really um, that that's a form of success. Um, and of course the financial aspect of that is there, but, um, and that I have been able to at, at different times support myself through my work. Um, but I, I really, more than that, I feel like I've been really true to my own vision. I feel like, um, I, I'm, I'm proud of that and I'm proud of kind of sticking to how I see. Um, and what I have found is that um, the people that your work will resonate with um, will will show up um, and you will find them and just kind of continuously delving in and making what you feel you're supposed to make, um, you know, you, you attract your people. And um, I think that the second that you sort of branch out of that and try to draw in um, the viewer that's not meant to be your viewer is kind of where your work will start to fall apart. Um, and again, like, you know, you connect with who you connect with. And I feel like for me, a form of success has been just really sticking to my idea of, uh, or my, my aesthetic. Um, but beyond that, I also think it's very important to be willing to be wrong. Um, and to be willing to really, like you were mentioning earlier, just to be willing to fail and fail hard, um, to really kind of put your work and yourself out on the line um, for what you deem important and valuable. And um, I've really tried to, to stick to that idea of if I'm going to fail and if I'm going to make a bad painting or if I'm going to make an entire year's worth of bad paintings, I want to do it big um, and really know that I took a risk. Um, and I feel like I've been able to do that and I'm, you know, I'm happy with that. But yeah, for me, it's just kind of enduring and persistence and persevering in what you know to be true. Yeah. Great answer. Sort of like a, a courage and vulnerability situation where, and also that's how you make connections with other human beings. You can't be invulnerable and expect people to give of themselves if you're not willing to put yourself out there too, right? Yeah, well, people pick up on that. They know when you're not. And, um, you know, I, I think that sometimes you can make work that is quote unquote less successful, but um, in the sense of, uh, you know, it's not this like finished piece, but if it's resonating and connecting with people and enabling people to ask themselves hard questions, it's successful. Um, and yeah, so that's what I, I really believe that. Um, it's really cool to be introduced to another artist that you've never met or seen their work and randomly plucked out. And so this was really cool to get to know Grace, Anthony, Veronica. Yeah, absolutely. This was wonderful. Um, I really appreciate the opportunity to talk to both of you. If you have any questions for Rose or Grace, feel free to email me at meltongallery at uco.edu.